Welcome to this segment of my educational series on prosthetics, orthotics, and amputee rehabilitation. My name is Dr. Heike Ustall. I'm a specialist in rehabilitation medicine, and I hope this is an educational and enjoyable video. Thank you. So, welcome back everybody, it's Dr. Ustall again. In today's segment of our educational series, we're gonna talk about prosthetic feet. So, the foot choice is gonna be important for many people because the performance of the foot, whether it tolerates more indoor or outdoor activity, whether it has motion to it, whether it provides a little bit of push that we call propulsion, will make a difference on whether you walk well or walk just okay. Almost anybody can walk on any foot, but to really optimize or maximize your function, we want to select the right foot. The challenge is there are 220 different prosthetic feet out there on the world market, and we have access to most of them. They are generally categorized into four different classifications, and that classification was established by Medicare 25 years ago. I, as the doctor, have to determine what category you belong to and that will then give me some choices of what type of foot to select. For the lowest level of patient that's only going to be walking around in their house on a level surface, that's basically what we we'll call a category one patient. They can get a very simple, very lightweight, and yes, very inexpensive type of foot. Now that might be a simple one that is literally a wooden block covered in foam. Now you can't really see very much here, but if I show you a cutaway, of this foot, you can see that it literally is a wooden block with a piece of foam. Now it doesn't mean it's a bad foot, but it's very light, it's very simple, and it's a very, very low maintenance. The front half of the foot has a little bit of bend to it because it's rubber, but the rest of it is basically just one solid block. Now I'm not a big fan of this, but if you want a lightweight and simple, then it works very nicely. For most of our patients that are going to be walking indoors, you're also allowed to go to what's called a single axis foot, a foot that pivots up and down in one direction. So if I put this foot on the floor, you can see how it tilts up and down. There are rubber bumpers in there that will determine how much it bends or how soft it is, but it's still very lightweight, very simple, and qualifies for a patient that's a level one that's going to walk indoors on a relatively flat surface. Now once you start to go outdoors, you encounter uneven terrain. Now all of a sudden there's going to be lumps and bumps, little hills and inclines, and now we have a couple of choices. There are what we call multi-axis feet, feet that will not just go up and down like the first ones we saw, but will tilt a little bit side to side and maybe even rotate a little bit, and multi-axis feet typically have a way of sort of bending in different directions. This particular foot has multiple rubber bumpers at the heel, here in the front half of the foot, around what's the ankle joint, to allow motion that's going to go up and down, tilt a little bit, and even rotate a little bit. And that type of rotation is important for certain activities where you might plant your foot on the ground and twist a little bit. Simple things like tennis or golf. You're not necessarily doing a lot of running or jumping, but that multi-axial movement may be important to you. Now, those categories are helpful, but to be honest, of the 220 prosthetic feet out there, 200 of them belong in one category, which is category three, where we now allow patients to get what's called a carbon fiber or dynamic response foot. There are lots of different companies that make them, and each company makes a variety of designs. There's almost too many choices. You can see even from these three that are here, they're all carbon fiber, but they're set up a little bit differently. Sometimes they zigzag the carbon fiber. Sometimes they put multiple layers of carbon fiber because for everyday walking, you might use this sort of bottom portion. And if you try to run and jump, then the bottom portion bends a little bit and you start using the second piece. So what do I mean by this dynamic response? Let me give you a quick demonstration so you can understand. If we look at this prosthetic foot, you can see it has a carbon fiber strut that comes down across here. The one in the heel is much thinner, so when the foot hits the ground, it bends. And more importantly, it bends when it comes forward, and it gives you a little bit of bounce. So that as you walk, you bend the carbon fiber, and then it springs you forward. That's what dynamic response is. These are still very lightweight, 
but becoming very expensive type of feet. Now we are spending in excess of $1,000, $2,000, even up to $10,000 for just the prosthetic foot. And they do come in a variety of configurations. They allow for different height. They allow for different activity levels for running and jumping. jumping. They allow for different weight categories, typically up to three, three to 400 pounds if necessary. Now, the yellow one that's here is a fiberglass composite. Fiberglass has the same type of characteristics as carbon fiber. It bends, it springs back. It actually has a little bit smoother kind of bending motion. So you'll see in the near future that more and more prosthetic feet become fiberglass composite instead of the fiber, instead of the carbon fiber. Now, we have other categories of prosthetic feet too. So basically, the category one, category two, category three feet are what would cover most people. Now, there is a category four. It is a very high performance type of category, typically for sports, recreational activities, and work. As you have seen, some of the people that run on TV have a sprinting type of foot that may have this long carbon strut, but no heel plate at all. So category four is for those high level sports or activity specific type of feet. There's another different category that we haven't talked about, and those are both heel height adjustable and hydraulic ankles. Now, there are people in the world that like to wear different height heel. Certainly much of the time, women will wear a higher heel for social activities or fashionable activities, but even for men wearing a work boot or a cowboy boot may have to accommodate to a higher heel. Most prosthetic feet will not adjust to a higher heel. So there are specific prosthetic feet that will adjust. This particular one, when you push the button, you can slide it. So now this will accommodate for a heel about two inches high. And when you wear a lower shoe, you push the button, it slides down to flat. So it goes from this position up to a, this position. Here's another one that allows this much motion and that much heel height. Now, realistically, these are not necessarily the highest performance feet. They're low to medium performance feet, but the heel height adjustability for some of our patients is incredibly important. Now, I mentioned about hydraulic foot and ankle mechanisms. Hydraulics were notoriously heavy and problematic. Now, miniature hydraulics that are more reliable have become available. They allow a certain amount of motion of the ankle, but the motion requires some resistance, some body weight, and that's adjustable with a little dial on each side or in the body of the foot. So this is not intended to accommodate for heel height, it's intended for, to accommodate for uneven terrain like walking up and down hills. So if you happen to live on a, on a hill and you have to walk down your driveway to get to the mailbox, this kind of a foot that has more motion may be so much better than another foot. It still may have medium performance because of the carbon fiber in the front, but it gives you more motion in the ankle. Here's the dilemma, is the more motion you allow here, the less performance you'll get out of the carbon fiber foot. So when you go to this hydraulic ankle, this allows a ton of movement. But because it allows that much movement, the carbon fiber plate in here really will not give you much of that bounce or propulsion. So it's a, it's a balance of What's more important to you? Is it important to be able to walk up and down hills and have the foot stay flat on the ground no matter what the tilt is? Or is it more important to have that push or that propulsion? And that's a discussion that you need to have with your prosthetist and with your physician because there are so many choices and there likely is one choice, one category, even just one supplier perhaps that makes just the right foot for you. So there's no one foot that's perfect for everyone, but there's probably one that's out there that's right for you. Now, these all look very mechanical and kind of ugly, but all of them are covered with a rubber shell. So no matter what they look like out here, all of them will have this type of a shell. And you also have to know that sometimes they come with toes and sometimes they don't. Now, the one with no toes actually slides into a shoe much more easily. But the one with toes looks much better when you wear a sandal or something else that the toes are exposed. So it's just one more question to ask your prosthetist is what does the foot shell look like when it's done? So I hope that answers most of the questions you have about prosthetic feet. If not, you can certainly talk to your prosthetist, talk to your doctor, but hey, I'm the doctor you want to know. Thank you.